This week on El Cara Ham Radio, I'm going to be checking out a new antenna called the Compact Tenna. This is the tri-band 2 meter, 220, and 440 antenna. We're going to give it a try and we're going to compare it against the Comet antenna that I've been using on my truck for quite some time. Just using a mag mount there and we're going to check the SWR and all kinds of things and we're going to see how it does. This week on El Cara Ham Radio. Okay, so what I've done is I've hooked up my MFJ SWR analyzer here in the truck. I've disconnected the antenna that I'm currently using, a Comet antenna, which has actually done very, very well. And you can see on our repeater frequency of 146.8887 there, we're at about 1.3, which is actually pretty good for this antenna. And I've been very happy with this antenna. In fact, I get very strong signals into the repeater and occasionally on simplex. But again, I've been intrigued with this compact antenna and thought, well, let's give that a try. Now, before I do that, let me move this antenna to different places on the roof of my truck and uh, we will see if the SWR changes. Now right now, this SWR is with the antenna right in the middle of the truck roof. And so that's where it gets the best SWR. And what we're going to do is we're going to move it around a little bit and I'm going to show you why a little bit later because the compact tin is a little bit different than what we're used to. So in the next segment, I'm going to put this on a different portion of the truck roof and we're going to see what the SWR looks like with the Comet antenna and uh, I'll bring it right back. Okay, so here in this segment, what I've done is I've moved the, the uh, Comet antenna here to the back right portion of the roof. Just a mag mount and like I said, this antenna does amazingly well, but good placement on the roof of your truck. Uh, will make the best of the SWR situation. So now let's check the SWR on the MFJ. And you can see, lordy, it's gone up a bit. Now we've drifted down a little bit on frequency, but by and large, it's going to be about 2.0 on this back right corner. Let's try one more location. I'll bring you right back. Okay, so now we have it on the front right corner of the roof. Same antenna magnetic base. Let's go take a look at the MFJ and you can see we're coming in at 1.7 so it got a little bit better but uh, you know a little bit higher than where it was in the middle and that's the thing with these types of antennas they do the best right smack dab in the middle of your true truck roof and uh, that will give you the lowest SWR and it also gives you a better ground plane so like I said, I've been very pleased with this antenna, uh, but it sticks up quite a ways, and I thought, well, let's try a smaller antenna. So let's whip out the compact antenna. Let's talk a little bit about the installation, and then we're going to try it in different spots on the truck roof. Be right back. All right, so this is the Comet antenna. Let me turn this just a little bit. This is the CA2X4SR NMO mounted antenna. What we're going to do is take this off the base that we currently have and we're going to put the new compact antenna on this same base. Now what comes in the packaging? Well as you'll notice here it's really simple packaging. I'm used to getting things in real tight plastic that you know cut your fingers off. So this comes in a cellophane bag and uh, you basically have an information card, you have the antenna, you have a uh, if you'll notice a little washer there that'll go down on the base and it comes with a little bit of uh, dielectric grease to put on the NMO uh, mount. So let's pull it out of the bag and let's see what the individual components look like. And like I said, it just comes with this information card so it's very simply packaged. They're, you're, they're keeping the cost down by keeping the packaging down as well. Alrighty, so now we've got everything out of the uh, cellophane bag. Let's take a look at the sheet. So there's a little bit of information in here on the engineering of the antenna. We're going to skip that because that's way above my pay grade. But it's not like other antennas. And if you come down here to the paragraph on product narrative, you'll notice it says things about uh, superior science performance with vehicle location changes and movement. 
Okay, we'll take their word for it. Superior science performance in non-line of sight or obstructed environments. We're going to test that a little bit. And uh, the, uh, the cool part about this is, again, its form factor. Now, let's take a look at the actual compact tenna itself. You can see it's a cylinder. Uh, I hate to say exactly what that looks like because that may get this uh, video uh, demonetized, but it's about that size of some other types of devices you might be familiar with. It's got a nice little NMO connection on the back. You can see the little uh, copper leaf spring there, and uh, that's what's going to go on. And if we come back over here to the base, it's basically just going to fit on like that. We're going to screw it on here in just a second. Now, in addition... In a nice little Ziploc bag, we've got a little bit of the dielectric grease and that uh, rubber seal that we're going to put on the bottom. So let me go ahead and put those uh, the seal on. We'll get the dielectric grease opened up, and let's go ahead and install the antenna. So I'll be right back. Okay, so if I, I've installed the uh, rubber gasket there on the bottom, and what I'm going to do now is take a little bit of this dielectric grease and go around the edge, and when I screw this on, it's actually going to take that grease and go around the threads nicely. It won't take a whole lot, actually. So we'll just put just a little bit on and then move that down where to get into the threads. And then once we have that on there, we're going to take the compact tenna here and we're going to press and we're going to screw it on. There we go and a uh, little bit of wind but uh, that's about it folks it is on there we've got uh, the rubber gasket on there we've got a little bit of dielectric grease so now what we're going to do is we're going to put this up on the truck bed or truck bed the truck roof and uh, we're going to try it in different locations to show you that the dynamics the engineering dynamics on this antenna are quite a bit different than the comet that we got some readings on just a few moments ago so i'll be right back and we're going to try it in its first non-standard location. Alrighty, so we've got the compact tenna on the magnetic base here in the middle of the roof of the truck. Now it's not supposed to work well here, so you know the way this antenna is designed it's not like the Comet which would get about a 1.3 here, so let's take a look and see what the meter says on the MFJ SWR analyzer. Whoo doggy! Yeah that is not gonna work well at all. So we're going to move it to where they recommend. Definitely in the middle of your, your uh, roof is not going to work well. So let's move it to the corner where they recommend and let's see if we can bring this down. Alrighty, so we've moved it to the back corner just to see what kind of uh, SWR we can get back here. Supposedly this is better. Although I do need to move it just a little bit. Let's make an adjustment so it's not leaning over the edge. There we go, in that little crease. And uh, so it gets a good, hopefully, uh, capacitive ground there. And let's come back over to the meter. Oh, lordy. Well, it's supposed to work a lot better there. I'm wondering. I don't want to blame the antenna. I'm wondering. It didn't change a whole lot from the center to the corner. And the thing about this magnetic base, it sits up a bit. You can see that it's about an inch in... A quarter tall and uh, I'm wondering if it's making uh, good connectivity here hmm definitely not good let's try one more position see if we can get it something below 12 all right so I've moved it to the front corner probably need to move it away from that other antenna just a little bit right on the corner but it's not straight up and down so not, I'm not happy about the positioning there but let's check the meter and I don't think we're gonna be happy no, we're not. So I got a bad feeling that this particular magnetic mount is not going to work well. Let's uh, reset the uh, the machine here. 12.1 is the lowest I can get. Now let's go back up to 4.146.88. Something close to that. Yeah, 12.1. Well, that is definitely, uh, shall we say, disappointing. And based on some of the uh, reviews that I read, that magnetic base makes a huge difference and I'm thinking this base is just too tall. The antenna is actually sticking up too high and it's this particular end, uh, base anyway and that's not working out. So I'm gonna have to order another magnetic base and then come back. So let's do that. 
Uh, I'll be back in a, two or three days and we'll see if a different magnetic mount makes a difference. Okay, so now we're back with a different magnetic mount. As we saw with the old magnetic mount that actually worked pretty well with the Comet, the numbers just weren't there. And so one of the things you learn by looking at some of the community threads and so forth is that there can be actually too much material between the antenna and whatever ground plane it's going to use. And so I went with a really tiny magnetic mount. I literally got this off of Amazon. It's one of the cheapest ones you can get, about $15, $16. And we're going to try this out. Of course, we saw the numbers were up around 7.98 with the old magnetic mount. And I knew it had to be better than that. And I went back and rewatched a few videos from others. And that uh, magnetic base just wasn't doing us any good. So let's come down and let's look at our meter. Now this is in the middle of the roof, which is actually not where they recommend it. And if we just fiddle with the knob just a little bit to come back up to 14, 146.8. There we go, that's close. We're about 1.7 uh, here in the middle. Now remember, with the old magnetic mount, it was up around eight. So we've achieved much better results with this particular magnetic base. So let's put it where they suggest compared to what the old magnetic mount was showing and with the old comet and let's see what kind of results we get in the next segment. All right, so now we're on the corner and this is actually where they want you to put it. Some corner of your truck or car, it kind of looks funny. I mean, we're so used to putting it in the middle, but it does better over here on this corner. And to prove it, again, remember, we weren't getting any great readings with the old magnetic base. It was actually not very good at all. Let's come down and look. Folks, I mean, you just can't get any better than that. One to one? I mean, I can fiddle the knob a smidge, but just to be closer to 146.880, but 1011. And so... When you're working with this particular antenna, you've got to think about your magnetic base, and you've also got to think about placement on your vehicle. So this is awesome. So at this point, we'll be able to run some tests and see if we can get into the repeater, similarly to how we did with the uh, Comet, because remember, the Comet performed really well. I'm really curious to see if this will perform nearly as well. That's all I'm hoping for, nearly as well. It doesn't have to be just as good, but just nearly as well would be great. So in the next segment, let's actually go make a contact. I tell you what, before we go make a contact, let's try one more place on the truck. So I'll bring you right back. Okay, so now we have it on the front corner of the truck. Again, it, it does better on the corners, and I wanted to try this. I'm also going to try one more uh, uh, behind the back um, center light uh, on top of the roof and see how that does. But there it is on the corner of the front of the truck, and let's go take a look at our analyzer. 1.2 so once again really likes those corners all right keep this shorter let's uh, put it uh, above the center tail light see how we do there all right now we can see that it's right in the center right above the center tail light i have seen some cases where that's where people put them so how well does it do 1.5 so We've come down just a smidge, but that's not going to make much of a difference there. Let's come back down to 146.880, which is our repeater frequency, or something very close to that. Very touchy. There we go. That's close enough. 1.5. So I think that back corner is where I'm going to put it. 1.1, 1.0? Come on. Can't do much better than that. So when I come back, we're going to do some tests and see how well. We can get into the repeater from about 15 miles. Be right back. This is KY4BDP Mobile doing an antenna check. Compact antenna, seven and a half inch uh, on the back corner of the truck with a 1.1, 1.2 SWR. Can anybody hear me? KK4YUG, KY4BDP, you are coming through crystal clear. Clear as a bell, brother. Sounds great. Roger, that's awesome. Again, 15 miles, seven and a half inch. Uh, you're crystal clear on the receive. So it, again, it's it's doing really well to approximate what the Comet was doing. The Comet did really well, but it's just tall and ungainly on the top of the truck. So gonna be trying out this compact antenna and uh, 
uh, at different distances and see how well it does. Probably uh, going to Cave City and some things like that. Thanks for the report, KK4 Y Eugene. 5 4 BDP, no problem, brother. Uh, after you uh, do your evaluation of that antenna, you might have to give me some information so I can order me one. It sounds that good for my truck. Uh, this is KK4 Y Eugene. I'm clear. You have a safe day. Roger. Thanks so much, Steve, for coming back. This is KY4 BDP Mobile and uh, finishing up on a video here for uh, uh, the Compact Tenna 7.5 inch tri band. Thanks so much. Yes, sir. Keep an eye out for the video. It'll probably be out next week, either Wednesday or Friday. You guys give me some feedback when you watch the video. And if you have any questions, questions, let me know. I'm going to uh, take off. KY4 BDP Mobile. KY4 JW. KK4 YUG. Thanks again for the test. 73. All righty. So now we've got a good test. And it's clear as a bell. 15 miles is the distance that I'm at. I'll put the map up. Uh, so you guys can see the actual as a crow flies and uh, 15 miles is pretty good now our antenna is way up there so it's not like hitting it at 15 miles is all that difficult usually but again I'm just really curious with such a short antenna on the corner of the truck uh, was it going to be able to get into the repeater and be this clear and again I said if it can approximate that comet antenna which pretty tall uh, like Jim came back and said if I can go through tellers uh, drive-throughs, anything where I'm not going to really worry about hitting branches. Of course, the Comet has that nice little spring to help, but this will be even lower profile. So we'll wrap up in the next segment. Alrighty, so let's wrap it up. Compact Tenna, Tri-Band. It'll do 2 meters, 120, 220, and 70 centimeters, 440. So Tri-Band, if you've got a radio that can do all three bands, one antenna to rule them all. Back here on the corner, and I've just got it going in on the part of the door where there's no gasket. If it's being pinched at all, it, it doesn't do as well. This antenna costs about $99.95, something like that, at the time of this video. So you'll obviously want to go take a look at uh, different sites. DX Engineering uh, has this antenna. HRO has this antenna, for instance, and possibly some other locations. But we're going to run it through some tests, and I'm going to uh, see how well it does. But first blush, it's doing very, very well. And it's such a low profile compared to what I've had up on the top of the truck up until now. So let's go ahead and wrap it up. I'm KY4BDP for the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. And uh, we hope you like these antenna videos. Give us some feedback. If you're using this antenna, let us know. And if you have any tips or tricks when installing this antenna, besides the, uh, the base thing that I ran into, let us know down in the comments. Like and subscribe, 73.